Well, over 2,700 whale ships sailed all over the world from the late 1600s till the early 1900s. It's sad to say that only one whaling vessel remains today, and her name is Charles W. Morgan. She is a national historic landmark and is being restored right here in Connecticut. Here to tell us about this amazing restoration project at Mystic Seaport Museum is Matthew Stackpole. Welcome to the show, Matthew. Great to have you. Thank you, Desiree. It's really great to be here. Thanks for the chance. Oh, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about petroleum whale oils. I mean, this all happened, and this is what the world ran on at one time. Yes, I think lots of people today don't remember or know that whale oil literally lit and lubricated the world for 150, 200 years. I mean, that before petroleum, how did we fight back the dark? And the answer was, of course, candles. But uh, once whale oil was discovered, it was the finest uh, light source available, and it was used for that purpose. And it also lubricated the Industrial Revolution. So it had an enormous impact on the country, this country's development. Can you give us a little background, though, on the whaling industry? Whaling started uh, originally in this country along the, the, the coast, along the coast of Long Island, in fact, and Nantucket and the Vineyard and Cape Cod, where whales literally washed ashore. And it was the Native Americans who first began whaling. Uh, they actually found uses for the whales and, that had washed up and began to pursue them when they came close to shore. And ultimately, when the European colonists arrived, the, the Native Americans taught them how to whale. And that's how whaling began. The colonists eventually discovered that if they could put uh, certain equipment on ships, they could pursue the whales far away from shore. And that was the beginning of what became really America's first international enterprise, which was whaling. Wow. So tell us a little bit about the Charles Morgan, the Charles W. Morgan. She is a beauty, and you're very proud of her, I know. We are. The Charles W. Morgan, we feel so responsible for the fact that she alone remains. She is the last one. Think about it, the responsibility of having the only one left in the world. She alone represents over 200 years of American maritime history. And Matthew, we're looking at some of the video. Tell us what we're seeing right this, now. This is film from a, a clips from a 1920s silent film called Down to the Sea in Ships, which was a, based on whaling and actually used the Morgan and the whale ship Wanderer uh, to tell the story of whaling. It was filmed in New Bedford and in the West Indies. Uh, and again, it's wonderful because it shows actual footage of whale ships really sailing, which they, they, the Morgan hasn't sailed since the 1920s, and no other ship has sailed, no uh, whale ship exists. So it's great to have these. We hope to make some new pictures in 2013 when we sail her again. Look at what I'm holding right now. You brought this in, and it's absolutely extraordinary. I want to share it with our viewers and tell us about this. This is from back in the 1800s, everybody. This is a real piece of her. This is a real piece of the original fabric. This is 1841 wood from the planking of the Morgan when she was built in 1841. And I love to show it to people because one of the things that's remarkable about the Morgan, as the only one left, is that you can literally touch history with her. That piece of wood that you're holding was on the Morgan for her 80 years at sea, her 37 voyages. That piece of wood went to every ocean of the world and back. And what's really cool about this, Tracy, can we do one more shot of this? And tell us a little bit about what, what we're seeing here. You said that this is a very interesting piece. The way that the wooden planks were fastened onto the ship was called tree nails. Tree nails. And here's one, or trunnels is how it's pronounced, but they stand for tree nails. They're pieces of wood, this is locusts, that were driven into the, through the plank and held the plank onto the ship. We're going to replace between four and 5,000 trunnels because we're restoring her just as she was originally built and using the same materials. So that's the technique that we will use again. Really? Yes. So t let's talk a little bit more about the restoration project itself. It's a really remarkable experience. We are looking today at uh, work that nobody has seen since 1841. We're in the lower hold of the ship. Literally, no one has seen it since 1841. And We're looking at pictures now. There's the Morgan hauled out when we hauled her out in November of 2008 uh, for the beginning of this restoration. Uh, and again, the work we're doing is from the water line down. And this is what it looks like down below. You can see the frames, which are the, we call fuddicks, but the frames, which are the ribs of the ship. And that's what we're will be replacing, or in fact, magically, the lower third of them are good enough so that we can keep them in there. We're going to preserve those pieces of wood that are still strong enough to do their work. Matthew, I want to get the point across to people right now. They have an opportunity to come out and get a piece of history. You know, someone once said these words, every ship has a soul, and she has an amazing story to tell. She does. She really is, again, a 
portal back to 200 years of American history, and you can literally see it and touch it. One of the great things about what's happening at Mystic Seaport is you literally can still go aboard and see the work that's being done, and our shipwrights are using traditional techniques to redo this ship so that she'll be exactly what she was when she was built in 1841. So it really is a, a great chance. If you want to see the Morgan for yourself, you can check her out at the Mystic Seaport Museum June 25th through the 27th, and again, she will set sail in 2013. Is that right? She will. We, our goal and when she's finished being restored is to sail her again. And of course, she's available every day that the museum is open. They can come to the, to the shipyard and see the work that's going on, and we welcome the visitors. That's a great part of being a museum. Matthew, thank you so very much for being here. We appreciate